The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. This is how Jesus Christ came to be born. His mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they came to live together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a man of honor and wanting to spare her publicity, decided to divorce her informally. He had made up his mind to do this when the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because she has conceived what is in her by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you must name him Jesus, because he is the one who is to save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill the words spoken by the Lord through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had told him to do. He took his wife to his home. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What can we learn from this episode of the gospel that we just heard? Let us note that the will of God is often beyond our human understanding. Joseph must have been in an emotional crisis when he found out that Mary was pregnant with child. He must have been devastated and asked himself, how could this happen? to this virtuous woman whom I knew. And God responded to Joseph, please, and sent to him an angel in a dream to reveal to Joseph and assure him that Mary conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit and he should not be afraid to take Mary home to be his wife. Joseph believed acted promptly on God's will. The pattern in which God works in our life is this. In times of great pain, trials, and crisis of our lives, if we have that wisdom, we will turn to God and not rely on our own strength and ways alone to try to resolve the crisis of our lives because unless we turn to God we're digging a deeper hole and we'll never get out we are weak and frail and often helpless to face let alone resolve the great trials of our lives when we turn to God and seek his help and strength and light, God will always respond. He never fails. He will always give us the assurance that we are not alone. But are we like Joseph? Will we believe? Will we act promptly on the will of God? Many would say, what is God's will? It sounds so abstract. I cannot discern God's will clearly, and I do not know what is happening in my life. When we want to begin to discern God's will, we know that the fullest and the clearest example or model of discerning and doing God's will is Jesus himself who lived and obeyed the Father's will that all people will be saved. And so 
the fundamental reality and essential prerequisite of wanting to discern God's will is to have a desire to become more like Jesus. We have to ask ourselves and reflect on our lives daily. Are we becoming more like Jesus? We see a long queue for confession, and that's good. And that's one way to be reconciled with God, as none of us are perfect. We're in need of God's mercy to forgive us and start anew each day to deepen our relationship of who Jesus is with him. Another way is to develop a more meaningful, prayerful life. It is while prayers of seeing all kinds of different prayers are needed and important, it must connect with our hearts. Our prayers must connect with our heart and connect with the reality of our lives. And our prayer must be wholesome to be like that of Christ to seek God's will, not only asking for God's will and, and asking for the needs of our life. We must dare to pray that God give us the light, the wisdom to become holier persons, to become more like Jesus. And when we become really more like Jesus, we will find that whatever situation we, we are in life, we will always have the strength and the light of Christ to lead us on. God never fails. God never abandons us. But when we are too caught up in the pains and the trials and the unnecessary concerns of life, then God is pushed into the background and become of secondary importance. When Joseph was in the crisis, because his heart was in the right place, he's of a man of great virtue, he could sense and believe the angel's message in his dream and act on it. But if our lives do not help us develop and know who Jesus is, even the angel appears to us, we will doubt. If we want to build a deeper relationship and love someone, more wholeheartedly. It requires commitment and sincerity of heart. It requires sacrifice. Otherwise, we are not serious in building that love and that relationship. Throughout this Advent program season, we have programs after programs to help us develop that, that needed awareness of who Jesus is. We had the healing service on Monday. We had the Filipino mass last, last night. Tonight, we have a film on the, net, on, on the nativity. Tomorrow night is a gospel-guided contemplation on the birth of Jesus. And on the 23rd, we have another reflection on, on, on the meaning of Christmas and Jesus. If we don't make that commitment to come, of course, you can go to other churches too, but if we don't avail ourselves and we say we are too busy, then God becomes secondary. And how are we then going to discern? Let us pray then that God give us that wisdom, that we prepare our hearts more wholeheartedly, that this Christmas will truly be a time where our hearts and homes will be filled with the light of Christ that, has, that will bring us the newness of life, the newness of love, and the solid hope to know that because God is in our midst, God is with us, Emmanuel, life will become meaningful and fulfilling.